What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we are finally back in Colorado. I'm not sick anymore. Uh, after the little road trip home and all the holidays and stuff, I just didn't, didn't really know what to film because we weren't really doing anything. And I didn't really want to film us like sitting around in the house in our freaking pajamas, like watching movies and stuff, trying to feel better. So uh, now we are back here at the shop and Eric has been busy, right? Yeah, real busy. What have you been doing? Uh, Evo tore down to a shell. I got the motor out of the Impreza. I got the six liter going. You even worked on the Civic? Uh... R33. The 33. Get it all done. The trailer's done. All kinds of stuff. See that. So there's been a bunch of things. Like there's just so many, I guess, processes yeah. and so much stuff that was on the to-do list. And I haven't really told you guys about a lot of things because a lot of it came before we actually started kind of vlogging on this channel, which it would have been a kind of a part of the daily routine. Uh, I guess the biggest thing is that we bought an Evo uh, a couple weeks ago off of marketplace that had just some paperwork issues with it. And instead of dealing with all that, and it was basically a shell. So no transmission, no engine, no hood, uh, has some accident history on it, but overall the shell was fairly clean. But, uh, we just decided to, instead of trying to put it back together, cause freaking Evo engines are so expensive that we we're just going to part it out. So that was one of the things on the to-do list why we were in Florida. So, uh, Eric got this thing all stripped out and, uh, now this is just going to become a, a part out vehicle. So as you can see, we have the fuel tank, we have wiring harnesses, we have brake boosters, brake pedals, we have the shift linkage. Uh, we have a bunch of little things just kind of all the way around the shop and a lot of other stuff on the other side of the shop too. Obviously we have the dash, the interior, the seats, the Brembo's, the rear diff, um, just a bunch of stuff like that. You can see we got like a pile of bumpers and stuff right here. Uh, you can see this is Subaru stuff. That's some more stuff out of the dash of the Evo. We got the Godzilla moved over here. Rear diff, just exhaust pieces, rear diff housings. I mean, just a lot of stuff. So if anybody's looking for some Evo parts, we pretty much have a complete Evo minus a hood, minus the, I mean, we have the Brembo's. No engine and no transmission, but we have a transfer case. Um, we got a lot of things. So tons of parts, but that is something that got parted out why uh why we were gone and that is kind of a potentially a little bit of more of a kind of a secondary business venture just to kind of have going on here at the shop so if i find good deals on you know evos stis diesel trucks we're going to try to part them out also we have an ebay store it's motion auto performance i'll put that in the description so if you're interested in any of these parts they're probably not on there yet uh, we need to take just a day get everything you know clean the subframe pressure wash it clean a bunch of this stuff up and just get it all listed on there. And I think that, uh, I think that'll be cool. Uh, R33 is getting worked on in the background. Uh, and then that leads us to another, uh, thing. Maybe we'll just do this as a little bit of an update video for y'all just cause there's, there's so many things. Uh, we called the winner of the Evo yesterday. So congrats to Lau. He is from New York and uh, he is confirmed as the winner of the Evo. So we did a live stream yesterday on motion auto. So, uh, announced that we're waiting on the turbo to get rebuilt and some other parts for that to come in but yeah he should be uh, able to take delivery of this thing pretty shortly um, this is another vehicle that we purchased in the background it was actually a guy he just showed up to the shop one day and was like oh we're looking for the I'm looking for the junkyard and I'm like ah they sh you know we shut down the junkyard here a couple years ago but he's like well I'm, I'm looking to sell a vehicle you guys buy cars I was like, sign me up and so he had this 07 Subaru Impreza and, you know, it's non-turbo automatic. It's literally just a, just a base model, just everyday driver car. He was an older gentleman, but the issue was with it was that, uh, the timing belt snapped and I think somebody replaced it. And then now we have a bent, uh, we have some bent valves right here on, um, so you can see Eric put the red paint or the or yellow paint mm -hmm. on it. Uh, so we're looking at either getting these cylinder heads rebuilt or just swapping in some different valves. I had this engine kind of at my brother's house, which was a, I don't even know what it was. About 10 years ago, me and my brother flipped a, uh, it was like a Subaru Outback. So that has a 2.5, but the valve covers are different and they look different. The cylinder heads look different. So we thought that we were going to be able to just use these cylinder heads or at least use pieces off of these cylinder heads to rebuild those. So... Looking for a place to either rebuild these or 
figure out something with those. But uh, yeah, the engine is out. This is another thing that Eric did when we were gone. He got it all pulled out. And uh, now we're just gonna kind of get it all fixed up and, and ready to go uh, to go back in. So lots of little lots of little things. What about the six liter? How's six liter doing? Doing great. Got the heat working, the heater cores back in it. Replace the uh, oil pressure sensor. Just needs a uh, paint on those fenders and ready to sell. Yeah. So this has been a kind of an ongoing project that was in the background. This thing's been kind of a nightmare uh, because when I initially got it from the auction, whoever had it, they put, it was a theft recovery. As you could tell, it was stolen. So what they did is they just, they freaking stole it. But then whoever they ran it out of coolant or whatever, it had water in it. So then when it was in my possession and sitting outside for the last two years, it had been freezing and cooling. So it actually pushed out the freeze plugs. It cracked the oil cooler, cracked the radiator, cracked Cracked everything. It cracked so much stuff, pushed a bunch of freeze plugs out of it. And so that's just been a constant battle over the past couple of weeks of just like messing with this thing off and on. And uh, just been kind of, I threw Eric in on. Off Super of the... cool to see where it's at now. It's uh, ready for a new home. Getting close. So this is just another flip. So, you know, basically just trying to get some stuff ready and uh, ready to sell. So inside, what do you got? You got the double din. Figuring out that stuff, uh, putting a radio back in it. It is a Lariat truck, so it has a million button steering wheel. Um, but now it actually starts, runs, drives. Uh, heater core was also cracked, and uh, Eric did a pretty good detail on this thing too. So it's getting, it's getting pretty close. So this thing should be ready to be able to be sold here in the next couple weeks. Uh, we did some body work on the outside of it, on this this fender or this rear the clear coat was all faded off it so we got it sanded and primed so that should be a pretty good uh you know just basically we need to paint this fender we need to paint this bedside and then we need to paint the front fenders because they were just they were just black so and fix a couple more things and this thing will eventually you know get sent down the road uh another update need to add some more water to the to the program now that we're gone or now that we are back from our uh little adventure in Florida uh, so we need to add some water to the little cistern or whatever outside and uh, so that's kind of the kind of the update on that but I don't know if you guys need any Evo parts just freaking let me know because we're gonna have, I mean it's kind of sad like I'm I'm the type of guy like I like fixing cars and restoring them and yeah. you know like keeping them nice and like not like giving them a new life whereas sometimes they just get complicated and I don't know but this is like a this would be like a good race car shell for somebody. Like it's in great shape. There's no rust or nothing on it. So, which it's kind of a sad deal. But uh, you know, again, just the the cost, like the amount of profit that I'd be able to make, it's pretty much the same parting it out as I it would be if I was able to just literally just sell it how it or just part it out. So if I put it completely back together, I'd probably make less money. Than I would be if I were able to just part this thing out. So, again, test it, see if uh, if parting it out is the name of the game. So I guess uh, I'm gonna kind of walk around here a little bit more, and then uh, I don't know, maybe I'll start taking some pictures of, of some of the. Oh yeah, we should go look at the trailer, huh? Yeah. So we have a trailer, big 48 foot trailer, which I think we're gonna do an episode. Maybe we did we show them. I think we did a, a little bit of a video on it before we left, uh, but we have the 48 foot gooseneck trailer outside uh, right here. And so when I was gone, Eric and, uh, and Jeremy, they got this thing all kind of fixed up on the inside. Uh, there was a couple pieces, you know, a couple pieces on the outside that needed, needed some help. So, you know, this just, it just had all the stuff from the, what would you call it? like the all the house stuff all the house stuff in here so we kind of you know covered up some of those things so those are all good but then the biggest thing was just the inside there was no uh there was no wood it looked terrible the wiring was terrible nothing was nice but now we're uh we're getting to the point where a couple of things might be nice right oh yeah that's pretty nice you guys painted it too yeah i painted it nice 
See, it's 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 nice to like leave out of town and then come back and then just have stuff that's done, right? Yeah, I wish we could have did the wheels and stuff, but. All right, big reveal, big trailer reveal. Oh wow, yeah, that looks a lot better. So I don't know if you guys remember what this thing looked like, but it was terrible. Like there was no, there just wasn't anything in here. Like it was all just bare metal studs. And then uh, now we have the lights, all the lights and everything match all the way down. So it's actually off of a switch. And then we have the lights on the outside too. We have electronic uh, LED lights for that. So we have outside lights, inside lights. And this is all ran off of the wiring for the truck. So now we actually have a two car trailer that we could take places and, you know, take traveling. Got this wood right here, which that'll keep totes and everything from sliding off. I like you guys got the trim and everything up there. Yeah, Did you guys have. Paint, just got a little touch up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these. Was there. Nice. There was nothing here before. Or there was just an extra piece. So just threw that yeah. on there. I like that. That's we got a uh, two. Nice. The one on the bottom. Yeah, no, that, that that cleans it up pretty nice. So, got it all uh, all trimmed out and looking good. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, now it's actually like a trailer that you could you could use. You know, definitely sleeping. And it's presentable, and you know, yeah, we could put uh, you know put all the all the totes and all the stuff up there. So now we could actually do some traveling, or we could just sell this thing because that was that was the option too. Was like. I thought about trying to get like a newer, nicer trailer, but like this one was just in such, it looked so bad, but all it needed was a little bit of help. So I think, I think this was about a thousand bucks of material. And then you guys probably spent about a week on it overall, you know, but uh, I think we're going to add a couple little pieces of trim just to kind of tie those guys together. But uh, other than that, it freaking looks, looks pretty good. So I think now we could we could actually get this thing either listed for sale or we could just put it in use and start taking two cars to uh, to events or honestly like the the idea behind this is we were actually going to take this to Florida and we were going to buy take the giveaway Evo down there and then we were going to buy an E36 and bring it down there and then be able to bring merch and do all that stuff and then we just kind of decided last minute to because we were going to be traveling so far and going through like Indianapolis and going to PRI and like we didn't know how it was going to be to like park this thing or store it. And I was just like, you know what, let's just, I don't even have an E36 yet. So we just kind of hit the pause button on it. While we were gone, they went ahead and finished it up and uh, we just took the single car and I think it worked out pretty good. So yeah, now uh looks good. So I'm uh, just gone to any events yet. Mm, it went to Houston. We took the two Rangers down to Houston a couple years ago, and then I think we took it to one event at PPIR. But yeah, like now it's at that stage where we could we could do whatever with it. Like it, it's a decent looking trailer now. The only other thing I'd maybe want to do is just maybe paint yeah. paint this back so it all matches, and then you know the whole inside of this thing would be good. Maybe clean up this. Maybe put like an actual sheet, another sheet right here. Mm -hmm. piece. yeah put a whole new piece or yeah maybe do two pieces right here and or just pull this aluminum off and yeah. then just put you know a piece of that and just just do that but yeah overall this thing is uh turned out really well so i'm stoked that it's finally you know it's finally ready to rip so we could actually actually get some use out of it other than it just sitting here and the other thing it it was really leaky before like with the dust you know because there were so many holes in the side of it and and now I feel like this thing will seal up pretty good. So we could even use this thing for like car storage and stuff like that, which is kind of what it's always been. You know, we've just had cars stored in here for a while, which is nice because we can technically keep them out of the shop if we don't need to or get them out of the shipping container. And then we could use that for like part out vehicles and stuff. So lots of little things. Yeah, it looks good though. Yeah, it's got those. And there's the little outdoor LEDs and that's just for, you know, like loading in the pits and stuff too. So. Those turned out pretty good. We'll probably end up deleting these. And then I really need to decide what the heck we're doing with the with the outside of this. If we're just gonna go ahead and rewrap it, reskin it, paint it, or just sell it how it is and let somebody else deal with it, you know? 
We also need to figure out what we're doing with the Ranger and uh, the CRV. The CRV is just a manual CRV that we bought uh, just for parts. Just, you know, it's a running, driving manual CRV. Hey, this might be my new daily. Right? Yeah, I was like, is there nothing wrong with that? Uh, it needs a clutch slave cylinder or a clutch, uh, some clutch I master. It was broke or something, and that's what was the reason for the parts, not like specific. No, it was a it was a running and driving thing. I thought about so Adam's building the Safari GTR. Yeah. I thought about lifting this and just taking this on Safari too. Right? Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Or the Ranger. I really like the Ranger, but I don't know I got I got a lot of projects, and you know the other thing that we need to do is that. Like that's probably the biggest. Hey, we need that guy's engine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we need to figure out what's really going on with the with the party bus and the old uh, the old turtle top. I just need it. We just need to get. I just need to get to work. Is what we need to do. I think one day we just need to show up down here and say we're pulling this thing in, and For real, that'd be really and cool. then that's it, because it needs a lot of. Lots of potential, but also lots of freaking work. But Amanda, I feel like we could turn it around really quick if we actually decided that that's what we were going to do. Yeah. So, I don't know. Just starting with all this, pulling all the fire, plastic burnt stuff off. And yeah, just get that, the get the engine and all that stuff figured out and go from there. But, mm -hmm. Getting close. We need to, probably need to pull this out back, kind of stuff it away again. You know, now that it's all done, so it's not taking up a bunch of space in the parking lot out front, but we'll uh, we'll get there eventually. All right, so it's been a minute since I've driven the dirty 06 liter, so we're gonna fire it up and we're gonna see how it's doing. Is that your wiring job right there? That looks nice. That looks nice. <laughs> now we have a heater core in here too, so we can stuff that guy in there. Look at the backup camera. Oh man, we got a six liter. Yeah, I'm freezing. Yeah, we just put a heater, or he just put a heater core in it today. So that was one of the last pieces as far as trying to get all that stuff to work. So now let's go drive it and see how it does. See you later, buddy. Up the hill. See you next. Oh, did we put tranny fluid in it? Yep. So it's all, it's all happy. Good. Love a good six liter. Speed sensor don't work either. <clears throat> Maybe figure that out. It'll shift a lot better. This is a little wiggly. Maybe need some air in the tires and stuff too, but. Yeah, I'll have to figure out the speedo, but hey, six liter works. That's, that's a win. So moving on into my truck, one thing that's been bugging me is the cruise control doesn't work. So you can see this one has like the lane where like the adaptive cruise control. So these buttons, you can see this one says on off and this one says resume cancel. Whereas on the original one, it's on off and resume cancel. So cruise control does not work since I have this steering wheel in here. And then also this button stopped working. So I'm going to try to swap these buttons from my old steering wheel, which was like the you know, rubber one or whatever. I'm try to swap those buttons into this uh, this housing so that it actually works. Because it'd be nice to have freaking cruise control. All right, so been messing with this thing for like a freaking hour. And as you can see, the buttons just don't do anything. Like you should be able to like cycle through the menus and reset your tripometer and all that stuff. Even this side is now acting up. So I think you know. Potentially a problem is is that when I got this steering wheel and this whole like steering column is 
this you can see has the active front steering and it has the active like buttons for like the cruise control so the clock spring and everything in here is completely different than it is on like a standard steering wheel um, and all the wiring is like integrated into it and the steering wheel is completely different well this truck doesn't use any of this stuff and I was just looking it up I think it might be a bad clock spring because when I got this dash you were able to just you know spin the steering wheel and you know it wasn't locked so I don't know how many times it had been spun before I got it I tried to keep it in the same position but again buying used parts from somebody who's moving them around maybe they had their kid or something like grab them and spin the steering wheel and it twisted up all the wires for the clock spring and it seems like that's what's happening and it seems like today this was working before I took it apart um, and maybe it just needs to reset again but some like this side isn't working now so my heat you know where all the volume buttons and all that stuff doesn't work cruise control obviously doesn't work and all of this stuff where I can't even get off of this system anymore where like you could even see like your fuel economy or reset any of the trip meters which is what it was doing before and the cruise control definitely doesn't work so potentially a bad clock spring but the clock spring for this steering wheel is 750 bucks a clock spring for a standard steering wheel is um it's like 150 bucks but the problem is as well is since this is a push button start truck now the all the wiring is different for the steering column so I was even looking at swapping back to my old steering column but the wiring harness is completely different so uh, there's just so many things that switching to the push button start truck did especially with like the electronic uh, console so like I think initially you know like over here <coughs> this thing has this button which is supposed to you know move it up and down and sideways and forward and back well that worked for a short period of time when I first did this swap and then all of a sudden it stopped working and I'm pretty sure this the cruise control worked for like a couple days and then I changed the setting or whatever maybe the clock spring went bad but it's just weird that that doesn't work I've checked all the fuses and everything seems all right maybe I need to double check again but man I'm just frustrated with this freaking interior because it's so beautiful like this is so nice but then just nothing else freaking works and then there's just there's airbag lights and ABS lights and there's just so many freaking things that just don't work correctly but it's like it almost works but it's just I almost wish I would have just, you know, started, just said, you know what, let's just get a, a new truck you know, like type of thing or just been happy with what it was. But I thought that I'd be able to make all this stuff work, but now I don't really know. So it's kind of just, it's just frustrating to, you know, do a 28 hour road trip with no cruise control and then not be able to reset your trip because the button doesn't work and stuff like that. So uh, I guess I'm going to put it back together for the night, drive this thing home and uh, maybe maybe look at look into it a little bit more but I wish I could just replace the steering column and that wiring but I think I could still use this dash if I go back to all of my old wiring and then rewire the seats but the problem is I replaced freaking everything in this truck like this the cab harness the dash harness the door harnesses the the door handles for the the keyless remote and like there's just so many things that I that I did and all these hurdles that I jumped through but now it's like it works 90% and it's just dumb so like I almost want to just go back to the old the old dash and the old everything just to make it work but then I have to literally undo so much stuff like the door wiring harnesses and the door modules and the door handles and the dash wiring and then I have to go back to another key and then I have to program my original keys back to the truck and it's just freaking crazy and it sucks um, and then also the dual climate control you know now the dual climate control works but if I switch back to my old dash then I have to put in the old um, like non dual climate control heater core so I literally have to take it out drain the AC again refill it redo the heater core do like there's just so much stuff I have to do and then I sold my door panels so like this lock button for example won't work anymore because that you know just like simple stupid little things won't work so um, I don't know 
I'm gonna do maybe a little bit more research, but I just I think a lot of it. If I was able to get a Lariat dash harness out of a 2018 that was not push button start, that had the dual climate control, that had just a regular key, I think everything would work without the active steering and without all that stuff. I think that everything would work. The problem is there's differences between the 17 wiring harnesses and the 18. My truck is an 18. The harness is an 18 platinum harness with active steering, 360 camera, um, intelligent access key. You know, there's a lot of components and you know, it's, they're all just different. So that's a uh, bummer, but put this thing back together and uh, drive it home. All right, so it is a new day. Actually, this button started working again a little bit better than it did, and then actually the radio buttons work. So it's not as bad as I initially thought yesterday, but about three days ago, I did some shopping on the internet, and uh, I actually got on, I was on Copart, and I started looking up some stuff, and I ended up buying a, uh, a truck. So it actually just got delivered today via the Copart transport. So that is a Toyota Tacoma. I have an idea with it, uh, but we're gonna go ahead. I got some water in the back of the truck, so we're gonna empty the water, and then we're gonna take a look at my purchase and see see if I did a good job or not. Oh my goodness, what did I get myself into? What did you get? What is this? Look at that, it's got Fox shocks on it. It got dropped off like five minutes ago. No oh, that sucks. Yeah, that's kind of what I was looking at, and then also that right there, mm -hmm. the bed. I guess the beds are modular, like you could just pull that piece off and put a new one on it. Nice. Um, it needs a new door. Oh, jeez. Yep. This one's definitely needed. And oh, it needs no. a new fender, but yeah. Josh had that same thing. Oh. The interior's nice. I mean, the interior's not too bad. Does it run? It should. Oh, yeah. Oh, how you doing? Uh, Got no check engine lights either. Ready to rip. Nice. USB. Turn on the heat. This could be my new daily. No control. Oh, rear diff lock. Nice. Well, not a bad. Uh, Bad unit, I guess. Body. My new daily. I've always no, wanted a Tacoma. The daily that you have? My new daily. Oh, tail light too. Damn. You know who would have thought that it would have been that it would have been that it would have been like this. I mean, oh, look at that battery. Wow. Not bad. Well, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. Uh, this right here in the back, that's also a bummer. But you know, we'll get it. Uh, we'll get it figured out. I wonder if it's just the leaf spring that got pushed. Looks like the axle's bent, but I can't really tell. Well, we'll we'll look at it. We'll get her figured out. All right. So what we're doing it with it now is jacking it up. 2015 Tacoma with a four liter auto, 150,000 miles. Pretty clean, right? Yeah. It's got the Fox 2.0 shocks in the back and then it has the Fox coilovers in the front, which is sick. American which, Racing Wheels. American Racing Wheels. It's got some BFG all terrains. Uh, you know, a little bit of damage, a little bit worse than I thought. I didn't see, I thought it might have a little issue right here, but we might have to get a new bedside. Um, the axle is kind of my concern right now. So you can see that it's obviously like pointed forward, but the one thing I was looking at is the leaf spring actually broke right there. So I think that that kind of might be giving it a weird angle. And then it's also kind of maybe tilting it a bit, but maybe the axle is just bent because yeah, maybe it's bent. I'm pretty sure it's bent. So we got a bent axle, which is a bummer, but I got a buddy. I got a buddy who has one. Uh, maybe I'll see if he has a leaf spring and then we'll figure out a bedside and a door and then maybe this, this could be fixed and then maybe a little, the fender could be fixed. Uh, lots of little things, but overall, I think eventually this thing's gonna be freaking nice. What do you think? What color? 
of this color. Okay, I'm just gonna repaint it. I like it. Seat's in good shape. Um, it's got weather techs. You can tell they had a little bit of a dog. But we'll get this thing all freaking detailed and and ready to rip. I like the camper on the back. So nice. Uh, it's a nice unit. A little scratch. Somebody plastic up the bumper. Yeah, I definitely think that the axle's a little bent, so that's a bummer, but you know, we'll we'll get her figured out eventually. The inside's pretty. Yeah, this side is beautiful. I really like the I like the TRD. I like the I've always wanted one of these freaking trucks. Like they're just they're good trucks. Headlights need a little paint and a polish. Uh but the engine looks looks pretty clean. You know, doesn't look like this thing's been like abused or like sunk and you know it's not like full of dirt obviously it's dusty but it's not like it's like full of mud like they were out freaking off-roading it like crazy so other than this questionable wiring for the winch but we could figure that out later so that's uh kind of the update on the little tacoma went ahead and listed like four things on ebay for the evo and uh then I think I found a set of cylinder heads for the, the w, not the WRX, the Impreza. So I found a guy re that rebuilds these things. So they have like fresh valve stems and, you know, all that stuff on it. So I'm going to go up to Boulder next week and actually pick up those cylinder heads from him. Ordered a head gasket set for it as well. So this thing should be up and running within the next week. Six liter, would you do to it today? So yeah, Eric got the radio wired in here, fixed the ABS sensor. So the speed sensor actually works in this thing and then went ahead and pulled off the wheels and tires and uh, basically getting the wheels ready to paint. We're just gonna paint the wheels black and uh, and that'll be it. But uh, yeah, six liters, seems like it's running good. And then especially now that the um, transmission has a speed signal going to it, it shifts a lot better too. So that thing's just gonna be for sale. This thing's gonna be for sale. And again, just getting a lot of things just kind of ready to sell around here. Especially with like parting out the Evo, we got like the brake calipers listed, a couple other random things. Um, I'm gonna go through and kind of show Eric, was showing him a little bit of that stuff earlier on like how to actually list some of that stuff as well. Um, Josh was over here actually working on some uh, fenders and hood for my brother. He has a, a Ram truck and it needed a little bit of uh, front end work, so he's working on some of that stuff. So just a bunch of random things and I'm still just, I'm still just trying to freaking get back into it and uh, go from there. We got the heater working yesterday, or no, we got the heater working again today. Cleaned out a bunch of stuff with it. So yeah, that's pretty much the update on the last day or so. Uh, sorry, it hasn't been super crazy, but uh, we'll, we'll get into some more vlogs and actually get, in, get down to business and start working on some stuff. I'll probably come in and paint tomorrow and uh, do a couple more things for some stuff on the F-250. So we'll catch up with you guys then. Thank you guys for watching.